Joe Biden versus Donald Trump. What it will not be is a third candidate on all ballots across the country and all 50 state ballots. I'm talking about the 2020 Libertarian candidate. The first time we've seen a, a woman receive the Libertarian nomination joins us right now, Joe Jorgensen. Uh, Professor Jorgensen, very good to have you. You're not there. Um, how do you feel about that? Well, I'm more concerned about the American voter than the Libertarian Party because I would be the only alternative for people to see. You know, we keep hearing it's two old rich white guys, but that's the least of it. The biggest problem is they both want to spend our money. They both want to make our decisions. Neither one has an answer to the crushing health care problem, and neither one is going to bring the troops home. So I can see why they don't want me on stage. Um, you know, you did reach the qualifications of the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, uh, with 5% of the vote to be, I don't want 50 state ballots, but the debates require you to be polling at 15%. Um, so good enough for the FEC, not good enough for the debate commission. Are you angry well, at the commission? Well, but let me interrupt you there. I wasn't even included on the polls that I needed to score at 15%. I think what happened was last time Gary Johnson got to 13.6% and they thought, you know, that's dangerously close. So this year, let's not even put her in the polls. Now, of course, I'm on some polls, but not the polls needed to get into the debate. So it was impossible from the start for me to be on the debate stage. All right, now um, you have an eclectic background. You're a successful businesswoman, an entrepreneur. Uh, you, you are a lecturer at uh, Clemson University. I should fully disclose, uh, you teach my son. He, he attends uh, your class, your psychology class. Um, so I, have, I don't know how that's going to go. We'll see how that goes. But I want to get that all out there. But let me ask you, though, Professor, and, and the, 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 the battle of third-party candidates has always been that they simply take away from one or the other main candidates. I know you said that that's not the case, but we have seen examples in certain battleground states where people like a Ralph Nader in the past uh, move votes that otherwise would have gone, uh, let's say, uh, to uh, Al Gore in the, that year um, and, and, and do make a difference that way. But that's about the best they can hope for. What do you say? Well, what I say is I hope I can make a change. And people have asked me about being a spoiler. And the only way I could be a spoiler is if the other two weren't doing their jobs. You know, President Trump came in. He said, I'm an outsider. I'm a businessman. I know how to balance a budget. I'm going to cut the deficit and the debt. And he's done none of that. In fact, we've seen the debt go up higher than under Obama. So had he done what he said he was going to do, then uh, he wouldn't have to worry about me. Um, let's talk about a couple of where you stand on, on some of the key issues. True to libertarian thinking, you really are against over government involvement or you know, pushing their thumb on, on, on the will and the freedom of people. But uh, you raised some concerns when that included your opposition to lockdowns and even vaccine mandates. Are you saying on the vaccine mandate issue that if one were to come up to deal with COVID-19, you don't think people should take it? Or what did you mean by that? Well, I'm saying it should be up to the choice of the individual. Now, let me mention, I vaccinated my children when they were young, and my daughter has vaccinated her son. However, if other people don't choose vaccinations, then they shouldn't be forced to by the government. And a lot of things that libertarians talk about, how we should be allowed to use um, any type of drug, including marijuana, that we should be able to uh, gamble, or people should be able to engage in sex work. Those are all things that the government is keeping us from doing. But to have a discussion about the government forcibly putting something into our body is egregious. And I'm surprised it's even going on in a supposed free country. I, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised we're even having the discussion of having something forced into our bodies. But should that be mandated in schools? There are stories, as you know, a Professor, where parents opt not to give their kids vaccinations, which would help them, which would deal with everything from the flu to a host of other things. I mean, it's one thing to leave it up to parents, but if parents uh, don't want to do that and it endangers the child's welfare, is that a step too far? 
And this is exactly the difference between libertarians and the other two parties. The other two parties gives, gives us a one size fits all. So, um, you know, eat, let's say I want vaccines and my neighbor doesn't. We each have to pick our own candidate, donate money, uh, get out and vote, get all our friends to vote. And then on election day, one of us is going to win and one of us is going to lose. And it's a one size fits all. In a libertarian society, we get to keep our resources and then vote with our feet or vote with our dollars. So I can send my kids to a school with vaccines, and my neighbor can send his kid to a school that doesn't require vaccines. And that's one of the reasons why I think we're so polarized, is because we're having to vote on everything. I mean, it's getting to the point where, you know, pretty soon they're going to be asking us, do we all want to be vegetarians or do we want to be steak eaters? And I would suggest that a, a decision so personal as, vac as vaccines is something as personal as what you eat. Now, you're a professor as well. Um, you're quite aware at Clemson, I guess, they're going to look at uh, virtual classes after Thanksgiving, um, that they're concerned that this is spreading. Do schools push that too far? Uh, do you think that virtual classes versus in-person classes, it should be up to students and or their parents to decide? Yeah, education is a local issue. It should be decided among parents, teachers, and students. And one thing I would do is get rid of the one-size-fits-all Department of Education from Washington. And I heard President Trump earlier telling schools, you really should get back into school. But, you know, it varies. Uh, the needs of rural Appalachia are much different than the needs of downtown New York City, much different than the needs of Arizona. And it should be up to the localities to decide what they want to do, not the federal government. And as president, I wouldn't I wouldn't even give my opinion. I would say it's up to you. Um, let's say you were to become president. Uh, then I would ask you what your vision for America would be. You've often compared um, the way Switzerland operates. It is a successful country. Um, they have a banking center. Uh, they, they, they do everything the way a country should. Uh, the difference is, quoting here, Switzerland doesn't get its nose in everyone else's business, and they try not to be the world's policemen. So I would get out there, and I would say that we need to treat the world as our neighbors, not our combatants, and we need to bring the troops home. Is that your right. philosophy of what America should be? Well, you mentioned banking. I'm looking towards Switzerland as a model for our national defense. And what I've said is I want to turn America into one giant Switzerland, armed and neutral. We're in 150 different countries around the world, and we spend more than the next seven countries combined. And it would be different if it were just the money, but it's actually making us less safe, not more safe, as we saw with 9-11. So I want to be but when it comes to But can we be a Switzerland, Professor? I mean, obviously, we're, we're many times the size of Switzerland. Well, it might work for, you know, a much smaller democracy here. It's a little different with a country like ours. Does America have an obligation uh, when it comes, not say intruding on conflicts, I get that, but to, to, to bear responsibility or help the rest of the world, given its sheer size and wealth? I would say that because we're a larger company or a country, that that's even more reason to be neutral because we are seen as a bully elsewhere. And, you know, even uh, President Trump has been touting his peace agreement. Not everybody is happy with it. It doesn't matter who you pick. Somebody is not going to be happy with it. So that's why I want to remain neutral. And also, for instance, us being over in uh, the Middle East. Now, let me give a disclaimer. There's absolutely no uh, reason, no justification for flying planes into buildings. But we made it easier on bin Laden because he went to his uh, people there and he said, look, they promised they would be gone. Uh, they said they'd be here temporarily. They're still here. And oh, by the way, they're trying to take over our religion and our, um, our laws. And so it was much easier to convince them that they needed to attack us. Now, again, we can't stop every madman, but we shouldn't make it easier on them. Or for them. Would you dramatically cut our military budget? I would cut it so that we would have a strong defense for our shores. We need to absolutely defend our shores and defend our borders. However, there's no reason for us to be in France and Germany, Japan, and definitely not the Middle East. And I've been jokingly saying, you know, we keep hearing how great France is that they get five week vacations. Well, maybe we'd get five week vacations too if we weren't supporting their military and all the other militaries around the world. All right. Joe Jorgensen, the 2020 Libertarian presidential candidate. By the way, the first time that honor has gone to a woman in American history. We'll see how things sort out, Professor. Thank you very much. All right. We'll oh. be following uh, the debate. And of course, she will not be there. But the two main candidates, Donald Trump and Joe Biden, will be.